Today I'm with Anup George. He's the general manager for Mindtree in Australia and New Zealand. Welcome. It's great to have you here, Anup. It's my pleasure to be here. Thank you. Tell us about your business. What's, what's Mindtree? So Mindtree is really a 15-year-old uh, IT consulting and IT services company globally. We do about half a billion dollars in revenue and about 13,000 Mindtree Mines. We call our employees Mindtree Mines, and about 26 locations globally. Our primary focus is around creating digital solutions for customers across banking, financial services, CPG, and retail. Uh, I'm reasonably confident that you know when you and I go through our day, uh, you know, they listen to music, or have a snack, or catch a flight. There are services and products that are built by Mindtree that you consume on a regular basis. So our, our pedigree really is in consumer-facing, mission-critical system. And Nip, thinking about these mission-critical, customer-centric solutions that you deliver, is government a, a, a large customer of yours as well? Government is definitely a, a, a segment that we're interested in. But what we do with the government is we pick uh, long-term strategic engagements that the government's embarked on. And the most recent one that we did was for the government of India, where they wanted to give a unique biometric ID to a billion citizen, right? And that's something that we felt touches millions of people, billions of people actually, and that helps them connect with the government in ways that were never possible. So government definitely is, but looking for transformational programs where the government wants to connect with the citizen on a one-on-one -on -one basis. And while that's an extraordinary uh, development in, in India, think, thinking about Australia, where do you see the opportunities for change to be driven uh, with the use of digital economy? Digital is, is an interesting concept. Uh, you know, from the time you buy a coffee all the way to, you know, like I said, catching a flight, digital is pervasive. It's there everywhere. So for governments to be able to deliver services in a personal basis, I think digital is the underlying fundamental block. Uh, we do an interesting thing in the company called learning from unusual sources. Uh, we fundamentally believe that technology enables an outcome. And to be able to understand the outcome, we really need to talk to people who do their jobs day in and day out. So this program that we call Learning from Unusual Sources, we get in you know, astronauts, we get in athletes, we get in people from different fields who have nothing to do with IT, but hear them out and sort of understand where are they heading in their lives. And that's how we figure digital in the context of somebody else's uh, life as they go through their day. So in that context for us, even in Australia, uh, I think if you look at where people are heading, whether it's graduates or whether it's employed, the digital part of that is core to what they do. More and more people are expecting services to be delivered to them where they are, when they are, as opposed to they going to a particular location to get services done. And digital in that context helps deliver services to, to customers really where they are, as opposed to they having to go somewhere else to consume a, a service, whether it's the government or whether it's the private sector. And you'd be familiar with the AAA's policies. Over the last 12 months, we've been focused on the development and growth of an ICT industry here in Australia, the leveraging of national assets, the NBN and the Square Kilometre Array. And uh, separate to that, the creation of exemplar products and services for export. Where do you see export opportunities for Australian ICT companies? Like I said, uh, there are two parts to that. I think the NBN is a great example of where Australia is invested in future-looking technology. But I think what's missing there is really the use cases for utilizing that infrastructure. Uh, there's a lot of debate around the actual networks and how it's being rolled out. But I haven't heard uh, enough stories about what would you use that for? Is it to improve healthcare? Is it to improve education? How does the private sector benefit? How does the government sector benefit? So I think there aren't enough champions talking about that. Uh, so I think if I were to uh, invest and have a strategy around that, I think that'd probably be the engagement uh, to use that platform for the future. So that's probably one area. The second is probably, I think the biggest advantage that we have as a country is our people and culture. And I think from a services, there's an amazing opportunity in my mind to export that into the region. So if you look at you know, who our neighbors are, most of them are on the cusp of you know, uh, delivering services to citizens. We have already crossed that hurdle in Australia. There's an opportunity for the government to be able to work with other regional countries and export that skill. Uh, we talk about skills you know, and jobs getting located elsewhere out of Australia, but I think there's a real opportunity for us to retain that here and export that back into these countries. I don't think industry is doing much about that uh, either. So in my view, I think both of these are 
absolutely amazing opportunities for us to sort of capitalize for the next five to ten years. Fantastic. And thank you very much for your time today and for your insights. I've really appreciated it. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you.